When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374-0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Well, no change at the top after the Old Firm derby yesterday. 3-3 at the end. What an afternoon of football for Scotland, for Glasgow and for the big two. Three big VAR decisions. What do you think? 0808 17 17 700 and one of the fastest goals ever in the derby 21 seconds and what a comeback by Rangers in the second half Barry Ferguson was there he's here Mark Guidi is always everywhere you can call either of them now what a game Mark you've had time to draw breath what do you make of it 3-3 yesterday it was unbelievable yeah, I mean, first of all, Paul, I think I congratulate both sets of players because it was a brilliant 100 minutes um, of football, end to end stuff. You know, Celtic being in the lead uh, twice, Rangers coming back twice, and scoring a fantastic uh, equaliser from Rabbi Matondo. Shane of the spoils, uh, Paul keeps the title, which is brilliant for Scottish football, keeps the title in both our hands. Uh, Celtic six games to go, Rangers seven games to go. But on the back of yesterday, Paul. I think it's 50-50, as close to 50-50 as you're ever going to get at this stage of the season. However, on the back of that result yesterday, looking at the remaining fixtures, I now make Celtic slight favourites to make it three in a row. Barry, midday yesterday, you probably had hardly taken your seat when uh, Maida scores. It was a crazy start. Yeah, you're spot on. I actually just took my seat and obviously the the goal went in. A horrendous goal to lose, Paul. No doubt about it. Tavernier's got to deal with it um, better. Um, you you obviously know who's behind you yeah. a guy like me did with the, the pace that, and the running power he's got so the worst possible start and um, Rangers that that's as poor as I've seen Rangers mm. in the first half the manager obviously gets him in at half time he's obviously had a, a talking to him he's made the change and I think um, bringing Seymour on um, lifted Rangers um, pace very direct and look enjoyed it it was full of goals some Good passages of play, some VAR decisions. Um, but yeah, listen, I agree with Mark. Well, no, in terms of Celtic, I think it's 50 50 now. As it's going to, this is going to be a cracking. Um, obviously, Celtic have got six games, Rangers have got seven games left. And um, I'm really looking forward to the next five or six weeks. How did it feel as a Rangers legend at full time? Because watching it on the telly, I was on here, as you know, with Chris Burke and John Hartson. Did it feel like a Rangers victory? Because at the end of the day, Celtic haven't lost again. But how did it feel for you yesterday afternoon? Well, at half time, I was concerned, Paul, with the, the, the performance that Rangers put in the first 45 yeah. minutes. I mean, I was saying to a few of the guys, it's going to be a big 10 minutes for the manager. Um, he, he had to make um, the, the change, certainly with Seema. And I'm sure there was a few choice words. Because the, the performance, they look really nervy to me, Rangers, and I've not seen that um, in their play. Obviously, it rattled them with, with obviously conceding the goal after 21 seconds. Um, but look, I, I was concerned, but listen, the manager done his job, he made the changes, he's obviously had a few choice words to say, and listen, the Rangers team in the second half certainly showed a very good response, um, showed a bit of spirit and a bit of fight. And this is what this new Rangers manager has brought, uh, has brought to this this club. Matt Riley, coolest man in the stadium, Mark. You've got 50,000 Rangers fans. Yeah. You're coming up. Celtic's record of penalties have not been great this season, mm-hmm. but he was the coolest man in the pitch when he scored. Yeah, I mean, uh, it takes a lot, uh, Paul, to uh, go and have a wee dink um, like that, as you say, and, inside the Ibrox with 50,000 Rangers fans, one up. You know, you think, it, you probably think at that moment, if, if you're Matt O'Reilly, if I score this, the three points are in the bag. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he did, and against a top quality goalkeeper. Uh, such as Jack Butland so to go and do that tremendous confidence it's one of the ones you leave yourself wide open because if it doesn't work <laughs> then you know you as well getting hooked uh, there and then you know taking off because your confidence would be so low but credit to him it was a belter and when it went to 2-0 considering the, the flow of the game uh, for that sort of first uh, half hour or 40 minutes whatever it was Celtic scored uh, the penalty I didn't see uh, Rangers coming back so credit to them um, for coming back that said in the first place um, I was very surprised with the manager for Lippi Clermont's team selection 
and also his tactics in the first half as well. Yeah, that was my next question. Just before that, though, what about Celtic Maeda with a chance? Hatati, the shot just wide. O'Reilly header, good save by Butland. It could have been three in the first half and it would have yeah. been different. Do you think Celtic today will be thinking, we blew that in the first half, we should have got more? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's where I'd, I'd be critical of Celtic on the back of yesterday. Paul has been unable to defend the lead twice. You know, it just shows that, that they've got a lot of work to do to get to where Brendan Rodgers wants them to be if you look at them as well I think they they invite a lot of pressure on themselves with the style of play that Brendan wants to, to play and I don't think he's got enough good players yet to actually go and implement that uh, so defensively yeah question marks um, over Celtic as a unit um, and that's something that needs to to, uh, to be looked at but in terms of the way they played in the first half they, they, they were exceptional sensational first half wasn't it and Rangers had uh, the better of the second half and then 3-3 three, three at the end. Let's hear from the two managers, then we'll continue looking back last night. We'll take some calls as well. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Philippe Clement. In the first place, proud. What the guys have showed. Of course, this is a really, yeah, I don't have a good word because my assistants use uh, words that I cannot use on television about this start, but it's the worst scenario you can have to go behind like that in the first minute of the game. Also, to get a penalty against like that is also something bad and every manager in the world gets stress out of these rules with the handballs because this ball is deflected the last, last split second. So my defender jumps with his arm up here because you, you need to do that to jump. And he tries to put his arm away, but still it, it hits his elbow. So... Uh, that's the worst scenario you can have to be 0 2 behind in half time. But the second half, uh, all the boys showed their real personality. And there are so many, in so many ways, step ma steps made the last couple of months. But this is a really, really clear signal uh, for the outside world what this dressing room is about and how they changed their mind and how they are now. Uh, with a winning mentality, never giving up mentality, and uh, I'm really proud about that. Barry, can I ask you on the Rangers lineup? People were surprised, I think, especially Scott Wright being in there. Lawrence was preferred to Cantwell. Were you surprised? Yeah, I, I was surprised when I, I seen the, the lineup. But we did speak about it on Friday. Yeah. I mean, if, if Lawrence played instead of Cantwell, I wouldn't be too fussed because Tom Lawrence is a good player, but I thought he struggled yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, he looked a, just a bit off it, so I was I was surprised that Cantwell didn't start, and also obviously Scott Scott Wright playing in the the, the right side of the midfield. I thought he would have went with Sterling and, and put Barisic in. So look, he, he obviously he's noticed that during the first half he's made the change um, at the start of the the second half, and I thought Cantwell coming on for Lawrence and Matondo coming on for Silver certainly made a difference. Mark. You surprised too, and uh, that that he decided to go. I mean, Lawrence, terrific player. It could have been fifty-fifty. Scott Wright. A lot of people were on here saying they were surprised yeah. that he started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was the team selection was not what what I uh, expected. But then you're thinking, as we say, Paul, a manager in this instance, for Lee Clemons, picking a team that he, in terms of strength of of exploiting Celtic's weaknesses, but also coping. Celtic strength, so you've all, it's always a twofold. Yeah. So there's a reason why he's gone for it. I found it surprising, and just the tactics as well. I mean, the second half, night and day, mm. because they, they, a lot more than our guys press Celtic. Whereas before, I mean, Barry's got the perfect view, he's inside the stadium, I'm going to be television pictures. But in the first half, it looks as though Dessers is turning to his teammates saying, Can you come up with mm. me? Can yeah. you come up with me? I'm on my own here, they're getting mm. out too easy. So the manager's tactics, uh, I think you, you've, you've got a question um, for Lee Clemon and that, but, he, but he's corrected it. But just one thing, Paul, about it is, yes, he's changed the mentality. Of course he has, he's made a big difference. But that's another game where Rangers have failed to beat Celtic in the league that matters. August 21 is the last time Rangers beat Celtic in a league game that mattered. Philippe Hollander scored Steven Gerrard's team. So I felt, and I said it on Friday night, if Rangers had won yesterday and then they go to Dens Park and Wednesday night win, the title was theirs. This was a chance for Rangers to really go and put the title in the bag in front of their own supporters and they've left it in the balance. For the neutral, it's brilliant. But for Rangers, once again, they failed to beat Celtic when it matters. Kieran's on. He's asking, what did he mean a moral winner? A lot of people are surprised by that, that Philippe Clement said afterwards we were the moral winners of the game. I mean, I think, it, Paul... I, I, 
I also think there's two narratives you can take for both teams. But if we're talking about Rangers just now, yeah. there's a narrative where you've got to praise them for the comeback. Mm-hmm. Outstanding. Yeah. To come from two goals down and then to come from 3-2 down with a brilliant goal with Matondo. So you've got to praise their mentality. There's no doubt about that. The other narrative is, well, you shouldn't be getting yourself in that situation um, in the first place. So it, it depends what way you want to go. There's two, there's two yeah. narratives. But they did come back. They've snatched a point. They've kept it in their own hands which is important and it's the same with Celtic um, but I just think when you're the home team and you've got home advantage you've got to make it count and that's why at the top of the show with the next Old Firm game being at Celtic Park mm-hmm. that's why I make Celtic very very slight favourite 51-49 mm-hmm. very very slight <laughs> favourites <laughs> many times I've yeah, changed my mind but, yeah. but I, w- I just think that that, um, that home sure. advantage should be an advantage. Barry, what do you think? What's the percentage chance of Rangers? I think it's fifty fifty, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I, I really do. Um I, I think when the manager goes and and takes a step back and, and looks at the game, I think he'll be really disappointed with the first half. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the Rangers that I've been watching for the, the last six months since he's he's come through the door. Um but again I'm with Mark you've got to praise him. At half time I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be a long second half. But you've got to give them credit. Mm-hmm. They, they came out, they were like, obviously they've had a boot up the backside, there's no doubt about it. He's made the change, which um, he did with Seema coming on, and he made a difference because he's very direct, and yeah. defenders hate playing against mm-hmm. pace, and that's one thing that Seema certainly, certainly got, and obviously got the goal as well. I know it was deflected, but yeah. I think when he looks back at it, he'll be bitterly disappointed because you can't start games like that, Paul. You, you can't sure. give a goal away after 21 seconds. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, and it was a sore one and it certainly affected the Rangers players we'll hear from Brendan Rodgers shortly let's go on the lines Connor's on a big Rangers fan Connor, good evening good evening Paul, Matt, Barry how you doing? hi Connor. yeah good thanks hi Connor. do Rangers have a problem with Celtic this season? Um, the actual games you know playing and beating Celtic yeah listen I, I would be lying if I said no I mean because the reality is that we have played them three times and Failed to beat them three times. Um, I would say that you have to look at each game individually and in the context of it. The first game of the season, yeah, but it's one mistake that costs us in a one-nil game. Where, let's be honest here, we probably were unfortunate to see a legitimate goal ruled out, which could change that. Right. So Let, we, we can't go. Let's not go on about all the individual things. No, 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 just there's so many. No, I'm, no, I'm, sure. You can, what I'm saying is it's just it's in context yeah. it's not like Celtic have blown us away in every game and we just yeah. can't handle it you know there have been reasons why it's happened I think yesterday to concede after 21 seconds is a dreadful start it's, you couldn't get a worse start I think James Tavernier you know he's just got to be aware he's surroundings you know he's not paying attention to the fact that Maida's behind him he's got his arms up as if to say I've got it it's fine yeah. okay it's a bit unfortunate that when he's tried to clear it, he's hit it off Maeda. Yeah. But for me, he, he's either got to play it back to Butland there or just kick it out for a corner and regroup mm. because you, you've allowed yourself to be caught cold um, that early and then obviously you end up with the, the penalty, which was a penalty. And I do have to say, by the way, because mm. I think it's important, I thought John Beaton had an outstanding game yesterday. Mm. I think every big decision he was asked to make, he got correct. Yeah, we're going to go through all the decisions in a few moments. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I heard Barry saying you've never seen Rangers play, you didn't say as poorly, but they've never been caught cold the way they were yesterday, which is why yeah. I'm I, saying, I agree with Connor. Listen, yeah. I think if you ask James Tavernier as well, he's got to deal with, he's got to deal with it better, Paul. What do you um, think he was thinking? I, I just think you've got to be, know who you're up against, right? You're up against Maeda, yeah. who chases everything mm-hmm. down. So when that, when you're running back towards your goal, you're aware that Mieda's going to be right up behind you. And um, he's got to deal with it quicker. It's a, and it was a sore one and it affected, it, it affected Rangers, you could see that. Um, it, there's no doubt about it, but he's got to deal with it. It's a very, very poor goal to lose. Nobody got the foot in the ball from Rangers' point of view in the first half hour or so, Mark. You could see they? the yeah. manager, you yeah. could see him. A bit of calmness right. as well. So, Listen, I know yeah. it's a hundred mile an hour. I know it's a derby game. You're up against your fiercest rivals, but you need guys. I'm looking about the pitch. And you need guys to calm people down. Yeah. Put your foot on the ball. You know what I mean, take the sting out of the game. And I think that was something that was missing in the first mm-hmm. half. It was. I mean, you're missing a Barry Ferguson. Just somebody yeah. to go. Yeah. I think you look at Rangers' main players. 
who you're thinking if you're going to win yesterday these guys need to be right on top. I thought John Lundstrom was poor Connor Goldson Connor Goldson I thought wasn't he great James Tavern has put his penalty away brilliantly but apart from that he's caught in two minds at, at the opening goal but I think one thing I'm talking about home crowds and again Barry's in the stadiums so he might tell me differently but watching it in the telly Paul I felt that when Rangers conceded that early goal there was a lot of anxiety in the, sta- in the stands and therefore the 50,000 home crowd I don't think helped the players what they needed was a bit of calm from the stands a bit of encouragement but any time there was a misplaced pass or, or, or whatever um, there seemed to be a lot of kind of blow, like the crowd were right on top of the Rangers players and I don't think that did any favours in the early stages of the game when for example you're needing Lundstrom and, and, and Diamond just that wee bit of composure let's just string four or five passes together let's get you know let's get the Celtic fullbacks let's go and give it a try and they never quite managed that in the first half Connor Barry says it's 50-50 Mark says 51-49 in Celtic's favour what do you feel? I, I agree with him I think it is 50-50 I think Mark's maybe right I think slightly in Celtic's favour just because mm. they've got the home tie although what I would say and I think there's a lot made on it but there's a lot of games between now and then and of course yeah. if we win the other six games we don't actually have to win mm. at Celtic Park that's, that's, the, Park, that's the real thing mm. because we could win the league without having to beat Celtic. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that we will, no, but sure. obviously, mathematically, the one relief for yesterday was, was fighting back was that we give ourselves the opportunity to at least get two points in front and then whenever that game falls, you know, you see what happens. And I think that there's a thing as well that psychologically, you know, that home advantage is going to be huge, but so is the fact that potentially it'll be the first game that Celtic will have went into behind Rangers in the league because every game... Yeah. We've played, we've been behind them, albeit we had the game in hand this time, but I think that plays a part as well. Yeah. What we need to do is be calm, because I think the last time we were we were at Parkhead, you know, again, similar to that one, the first half, not good enough. Got out of jail being 1-0, but then Kyogo, a bit like Matondo yesterday, scores an absolute worldie, yeah. um, and then you're bang in trouble. But we did, in that second half, when we were there, control it, and we did have opportunities to, to get back, yeah. so ultimately at some point we're going to have to beat Celtic but I, I think the fact that it will be a case of potentially must not lose there for us because actually if we can win the games between now and then it will be Celtic that will actually have to win yeah, mathematically sure. yep. you know. and the psychology changes yeah, yeah, a good I, mean, point. yeah, yeah. I mean I think yeah. Connie you're, you're bang on and, and, and you could well have a scenario come May the 18th where Rangers are the champions and they've not beaten Celtic in four games but that doesn't matter because sure. ultimately mm-hmm. it's about 38 games it's not about four games yeah. it's about 38 games so Rangers I, I think looking at what you're saying Connor they, they do have that edge because they, I, I agree I think the onus is going to be on Celtic that day to go and win um, I think that's what, what's going to have to uh, going to have to happen Barry what about Rabi Matondo and that goal the way he took it he did what he did against Hibs yeah fantastic but I thought it was um, poor defending yeah. the, the Show him down the, the line, but fair play to Rabbi Matondo. Um, he has certainly improved since the new manager's come in, and it's a fantastic strike. Joe Hart's absolutely no chance. He uses the player really well as well as a marker. Um, yep, yeah, fantastic finish into the, the, the top corner. And all of you, how about Jack Butland yesterday? It was a difficult day. Gareth Southgate's there. Every neutral, every Rangers fan saying, Come on, he's Scottish now. You know, he's, he's in Scotland. We want him to do well. What do you think, Barry? He had some big saves. A few tough moments as well. Yeah, but I, I think overall you've got to look at the bigger picture and what he's he's brought to yeah. um, Rangers. Yeah, I, I think he's been phenomenal. Yeah, he has, he's he's an excellent goalkeeper, and we'll go back to it. I was absolutely shocked that he wasn't in the, the England squad. Sam Johnson then gets injured, yeah. and he calls up somebody else. Um, so listen, he, he's still. I'm sure he's still hopeful that he can get in that that Euro squad. Um, and listen, Gareth, Gareth Southgate knows all about him. But he's a he's a quality operator, my. I, I thought he's safe from Matt O'Reilly's head. That was world class. Yes, I, yeah. I, I mean, genuinely, I don't use that mm. phrase lightly. That mm. was genuinely world class. And and given you know the, the, the time of what was going on at that point in the game as well. So for that, because he set such high standards, Paul. If I'm him or if I'm, I'm a Rangers teammate, mm. I'm looking for him to save. He does winner. You know, and I know it's tight in at his feet I get that but because of the standards he's, at, he's, he's a calibre of goalkeeper that I think I think you should probably be saving that and probably a lot of people think I'm a wee bit harsh um, on him with that but that's just my mm-hmm. view most other goalkeepers I would say yeah 
but because it's him, I would I would just think mm, maybe you should be saving that. Barry, it was close. Yeah, and it goes through the, the legs of the defender yeah. as as well, which you know, as a goalkeeper, I mean they're the ones you don't like, see when their power hit low and hard at their feet. They're they're the sometimes the hardest ones mm. to, to save. But I look at overall, since he's come up here, Paul, he's been excellent. Yeah. It, it strikes me that there must be one place up for grabs with England, yeah, England for, for Gary Southgate to make the journey up Paul exactly, when he, yeah. he could have been at Old Trafford yesterday or whatever that strikes me that and maybe maybe Nick Pope Nick Pope isn't going to make it oh, right. yeah. so I, I think obviously Pickford's a gimme I think Aaron Ramsdale will go despite the fact he's hardly played any football yeah. for now so I think he's going to go I think there's one place up for grabs mm -hmm. Or maybe two keepers. Joe Hart, he did a couple of big saves as well. <laughs> Give him did. one he, more he, cap. He, he, yeah. was, uh, he was brilliant as well. Uh, Joe okay. Hart, you know, he brings yep. that composure. Yeah, we'll talk Celtic in a moment. Connor, thanks so much for your call. 0808 17 17 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go. It's Monday edition and a special one. After the big game yesterday, 3-3. Three, three. What an advert, I think it was, Barry, to be fair, for Scottish football. But I went advert, it? Paul. Yep. I had, um, we both spoke about it on Friday night. I, I thought there was going to be goals in it. Um, as I said, I, I thought Celtic came to attack, no doubt about it. Um, Rangers, I mean, we're saying Rangers were poor, but you've got to give credit yep. to, to Celtic. I thought that's the best I've seen them for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but they're no, um, they can't seem to do it for 90-95 minutes um, which will be a concern for Brendan Rodgers and then the fact is um, I'm sitting at half time concerned with the, the Rangers performance but fair play to them they came out in the second half and, and had a had a right go at Celtic and listen the, the manager made um, some changes it certainly changed the game for Rangers Yeah I mean I thought you know um, Cameron Carter Vickers is uh, interview post match, yeah. Paul was was interested when he you know, basically saying we just there was just too many attacks for us to cope with in, in the second half. Celtic yeah. just couldn't get out, mm -hmm. but but the win, I mean, I know he changed that. I think made a wee bit of a difference when uh, when Ida um, came on. I actually, I would probably go with Carter Vickers as man of the match. Mm -hmm. I thought he was superb uh, for Celtic, but he, he sounded exasperated, and, and and that's my point. At the top as, as Barry's just said there, Celtic need to be able to defend. Uh, better Paul you know when you get yourself a two goal lead at half time and I know it's a difficult place Ibrox and there's 50,000 Rangers fans etc et and then you get you get the lead again with three or four minutes to go when there's a title yeah. at, at, at stake you've, you've, you've got to do you've got to do better let's hear from Brendan Rodgers that full time it's fantastic fantastic game obviously full of lots of events within it I'm so proud of the players today because we were so much the better team Leading through to the penalty, you know, our composure on the ball, our pressing, everything. We obviously restricted Rangers to virtually nothing, but we looked a real threat in the first half, 2-0 up, and could have had one or two more goals, I felt, with maybe picking the right pass. The penalty changes the momentum of the game, slightly for us in the second half. Um, mm. So it was a good decision on the pitch. And I think when you watch it back on the on the replays, it's really good recovery defending by Ali Johnson. He's going one way, and you can see he gets, he gets a nick on the ball, plays it away, and obviously uh, the, the, the player then... Obviously, has gone down and, and and obviously looking to simulate the penalty. So I thought that sort of gave them a little lift in the game, having us been much the better team. Then we're unlucky with the deflection. Obviously, it's a deflected goal. We gave the ball away, but still, it's a deflected goal. was in for two each. And then you're looking at your team's response then. And being here with no support to, to, to help you or, or push you on, the players got themselves back in front again. Absolutely brilliant. Great finish by Big Adam. And uh, it looked like we could then go on and win it. And... Um, Obviously, young guy Matondo scores a, a very, very good goal. But for us to come here to play with that courage and a mentality, and then the heart and the fight uh, to, uh, to to get a result to come away, and then it's it's still very much in our hands. So um, I'm very, very pleased with that. Mark, we're going to go to VAR now. This is coming in. G A R. The Go Assisted Referee on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning. Comforting air quality all year round. Clumsy pass there, a bit like some of the play during the game. Um, Mark, what about that then? What about the penalty decision? He talked there about simulation. You have to watch what he says. But Silva caused a lot of problems. A bit of uh, histrionics from him at times. But when, when the referee said, when he was told to look at the VAR, 
Uh -huh. What did you think? Uh, well, I mean, I think the, the key point for, for me, Paul, is did Alistair Johnson make contact with the ball? And I have to say, I'm not conclusive about it. I think he did, but I'm not 100%. If there's evidence that he has touched the ball, for me then it's not a penalty, because that's his first action is touching the ball. And then Silva's coming into him, he's not getting into Silva. If he's not touched the ball, I think it is a penalty kick. Um, so that, so I think the key thing, and when you were going to look at look at VAR, I don't know if John Beaton's actually looked at the the earlier cut in terms because I think the contact on the ball is key to the key to the decision. So that's what I would say um, on that one. I'll stay on okay. that one just now, Barry. That was a tough one, wasn't it? Um, what did you think? I, I thought it was a, a a penalty, Paul. Did you? I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. During open play, yeah. I was like, ah, no, I mm -hmm. thought it was a dive, but obviously I've jumped in. Yeah. I had a look on the, the, the TV and, yep, I think um, I think uh, Alistair Johnson has, has yeah. obviously mm -hmm. touched or made contact with Fabio Silva. And for me, yep, it was a, it was a penalty. I know what you mean. I, I sounded slightly surprised, only because at first you think, well, Silva has just gone down the way he was. But when you saw yeah, the replays... Like during the game, yeah. when you were seeing okay. what he was doing, yeah, yeah it was, it's frustrating mm -hmm. when you see players roll about when there's yeah. been no much mm -hmm. contact. Um, it was real continental behaviour, wasn't it? It's not yeah. really what you get here. No. He yeah. should I mean, have been booked earlier. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think the, the point, whether he's got previous or history for it, that shouldn't, that shouldn't come into the referee's mind when no. he's made a decision, Paul. You know, regardless of what the player's reputation is, you've got yeah. to judge a decision on the, 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 the here and now. And, and I think maybe John Beaton has been slightly um, going on what had happened in the past. And on that, just to, when I said on Friday night when we were in here, you know, in terms of the referee, there's a big onus on the players to behave, to conduct yeah. themselves mm. properly, everything. Because I think one thing that we've got to say in, in the past probably... See, I think since Scott Brown and um, uh, Alfredo think, Morelos yeah. have no longer been in, in, in mm. opposing sides because they brought a lot of a, a lot of a sideshow mm -hmm. to, to old firm games in recent years. But I think that the behaviour and the conduct and the sportsmanship I think has been exemplary yes. the past couple of years. But Fabio Silva yesterday when Alistair Johnston has made contact in his kind of neck area, shoulder neck area, um, how he reacted to that, Paul, I would use VAR um, to look at that and possibly bring uh, action against uh, Fabio Silva because he's trying to con a fellow pro he's trying to con the referee mm -hmm. and the way he's reacted to it for me leaves a bad taste it's not necessary it's not becoming of what that fixture um, mm -hmm. is all about and he shouldn't be doing it and there should be action why Why wouldn't you take yeah. action against a player for doing that? Barry, do you agree? Yeah, it's frustrating yeah. Paul I just want to see good football yeah. and good general play um, and when you see players rolling about it, it kind of it, it does it does my head in I've been mm. brutally honest um, I'm trying to think back when when I played that it would annoy me if one of my teammates was, was, was rolling about you would have to pull them up and say something for sure I don't yeah. thought that was when you go back to your day everybody was getting Leonard in yeah. exactly but, but, to, <laughs> but I think there was a yeah. But there was a respect there as well, wasn't there? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I think this fixture the past couple of years, yeah. you, you highlight, I think, off air, Paul, it was lovely seeing Brendan Rodgers yeah. um, and Philippe Clement yeah. embracing each other at full time, a wonderful 100 minutes. Before that, we had a really good respect between Giovanni Van Bronckhurst and Andrew Foster yeah. Coglu. Mm -hmm. So you think of all, and then you're going back to Walter Smith and Tommy yeah. Burns, etc., etc. So, I think, you know, the players deserve a lot of credit because this fixture has just been about football for the past sure. couple of years and, and I just think with, mm. with Silva it's not necessary and that's where you need leadership in your dress and say do you know what we don't need that mm -hmm. that's not what we're about we're about trying to win the game we're not about you trying to make it all about you get up get on with the game and do your job what about you were going to go on then to the, incident, the Matt O'Reilly penalty so what did you think? yeah I think that that's what I have to give um, uh, Var Nick Walsh a lot of credit mm. didn't notice that watching the telly uh, Paul and, and it is, despite what Philippe Clement says uh, in his post-match interview it's a clear penalty kick yeah, the kind of goal it's just the yeah. rules sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's, it's the, the new rules. game isn't it yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with the game. rules yeah. but it's a pen mm. yeah yeah it's a pen um, and I get where Philippe Clement's coming from mm. but just the way this handball rule's going Paul it's, um, it's a nonsense at times but look and the rules, yeah, it's a penalty. Here's what Philippe Clement said about the VAR decisions. It's not getting a penalty. Eh? Uh, I think everybody's really clear that it's a penalty. He's been kicked uh, against his knee. 
So it's not getting anything. It's even a little bit pity that he gets a yellow card first for that. But uh, in that way, yeah, it's important. You have VR these days that there are less faults made. And that's nothing against the referees, totally not, because they need to take decisions in split seconds. And, and it's so difficult to see everything. We know from every training, because I make a lot of mistakes every, every training day around that. It's impossible to see everything. That's why VR is important to have in football. And then, guys, Desers, uh, 17 goals, thought he'd scored number 18. He took it well. But that incident a few moments before, that's where VAR, what do you feel, Barry? Picked up on something that... Yeah, what did you feel about it? The Tom yeah, well, it was a it was a foul. Yeah. There's no doubt. It's just how long it took to get to mm. the, the the goal. I mean, what was it three or four passages of play, yeah. roughly? Yeah. Sixty um, yards. Yeah. Sixty yards. You, do you have to go the yeah, way back? Sure. Um, mm. But look, if you're going on the incident, it is a foul. He does make contact. Mm. Yeah, it's a foul, and I think if I'm John Beaton, Paul, if I'm assessing my own performance or he's, he's assessing in the stand, as assessed mm. that would be for me. The, the biggest one that I'd be disappointed in in myself because he's six yards away from that there's clear contact and from not to give a foul there and then so Va- VAR's bailed him out um, so you know, VAR, VAR bailed him out a couple of times uh, yesterday when I think Connor or Collar said he, 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 John Beaton yeah. had that, an outstanding game he didn't have an outstanding game far from it but um, that would be the one where I would be most disappointed in when he's got a clear view and it's six yards from him. This is Brendan Rogers on the VAR performance and decisions. Uh, yeah, I think they're all, all all correct. I think the obviously the, the arm is up for, for our penalty, so it's it's out of that body line or whatever words they use. I'm not sure. So so it looked a penalty and great composure by Matt on the on the finish. Um their dislike goal was, was a foul. I think we could see that and uh, and and John seen that afterwards. So uh so yeah, so I thought overall, my only, as I said, in a, in a game of this magnitude, it's, uh, it's always a difficult game to referee. And, and for me, it was only the, the penalty, which obviously swings it a little bit for them in the second half. But apart from that, I focus on my team and the players and uh, how much they gave to the game, which was fantastic. Who would be a referee, Barry? We often say it's the John Beaton overall. Um, I, I think certainly for John Beaton, Paul, you'll take... Taking John Beaton as a, as a human being, and let's yeah. not forget that's what, that's what referees sure. are, and they're just trying to do a job to the best of their ability. From his point of view, and from for, for Nick Walsh and the SFA and everybody else you want to include, the Referees Association, I'm kind of glad it was a draw. Mm. You yeah. know, that there was nothing yeah. like to, like, that actually made him the story. Yeah. I think the great thing about yesterday is, the main story is, the title's in both clubs' mm. hands, we've got a brilliant race, they gave us a great... 100 mi- minutes and credit to both sets of players for the, for the way it ebb and flowed um, and I'm just glad for John Beaton's uh, and another thing the conditions mm. inside the stadium it was really windy blustery mm. uh, and if you ask any footballer there the conditions are honestly hate, hated so you've got to give credit to, to both players because there was some good passages they play mm. um, some good goals obviously um, and, and, and listen it was it was a brilliant game to watch. And Mark, final point there, it's not about VAR as such. What happened at the end? You know, Cantwell and Hand the Aye. About handbags. Yeah. Yeah, I d- yeah. It's something's been said, Paul, and we'll never know what's been said that, that, that's led to a, yeah. uh, to a reaction. But again, yeah. we, we, we don't want that to be the, no. the story. And, and the good thing, again, where when you've got one or two that want to get involved in something like that, the majority between teammates and uh, management mm. have clamped in that very quickly and, and not allowed it to, to, to carry on, which is a good sign. Yeah, I didn't see what, what really happened or how it started. So I will look at images uh, about that because I don't want it. I want that we stay calm and after the game also and that there are no, uh, no fussy things uh, so that's why I try to calm down everybody as fast as possible and I'm happy we, we managed to do that. And Mark, um, everyone would condemn coins being thrown at the Celtic yeah. dugout when I think hit John Kennedy. Fairness to him, the police were there and he kind of said, I think Pushed he said, said it's okay, but yeah. come on. I, I, you yeah. know, Paul, you, yeah. you go to these games, you, if you're a Ranger yeah. supporter yesterday, you're going to Ibrox, turn, out and, and turn yeah. up and support your team. That's what it's about. That's what, that's what you're there for. That's what the Rangers players need then you know for that to happen yesterday again it's unsavoury and there is absolutely no need for it On to be fair to the police I, I was looking at the answer they, they dealt with it very quickly so you've got to give them credit for that but you don't want to see no. things come sure. to the stand yeah. and 
Listen, it's happened in the past, Paul. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it ruins it for the vast majority of, of fans that yeah. go and behave themselves really well, support yeah. their team. Mm -hmm. You're always going to get one or two idiots. And see the crazies from both sides the day before out there. The police in Glasgow, I don't know if you saw it, there were dozens of vans. Police on a Saturday having to go out for some of them, mainly I think the younger ones who'd organise some uh, activity that shouldn't be happening. Come on, let's just enjoy the game. But uh, it's a societal thing, Mark. Things have changed. Yeah, yeah. you know, just, just, Paul, I think it's fairly, or it should be yeah. fairly straightforward. Support your team in a way that matters that's within the, the boundaries of the law surely yeah. that should it be too difficult no, for sure um, Majoski should that have been a goal Mark? yeah for I thought so I felt I felt for Aberdeen you know, yeah. Peter Leaving was a chance to get another victory um, under his belt yeah I thought that was a a sore one in Aberdeen I thought the goal um, he offered his uh, goal that Livingston should have stood it's tight Barry isn't it's it it's because the yeah. Dunnish Coupon that's, that's, <laughs> that's how it was yeah. uh, plenty more to talk about 0808 17 17 700 going back in the line soon G-A-R the Go Assisted Referee on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning specialists in air conditioning service and maintenance requirements the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the market with help from their team of experts. Let's go! Elsewhere at the weekend, well, what a weekend for Motherwell. 3 2 against Dundee. That was three goals in 11 minutes. Unbelievable. Hibs, they've blown their chance just about to be top six. What a win. 2-1 for St. Johnson. Kilmarnock winning 1-0 against Ross County. Kyle Vassell, could he get an international cap for Northern Ireland? Because he played a couple of years ago. And uh, Aberdeen and Livy, 0-0. So Livy not mathematically down yet, but only one win in 24 league games. And St. Mirren lose at home to Hearts, 2-1. Um... But St Mirren, top six, your old club. So they lost on Saturday, yeah. but two years running, Mark, top six. Yeah, brilliant. No credit to, to Stephen Robinson um, and his players, you know, just once again, you know, showing what a really good manager um, that he is. He's been a great fit uh, for St Mirren. He was a great fit for Motherwell um, as well a few years ago. So, yeah, lovely to see. And Barry, what about Motherwell? What a comeback there. Brilliant. Um, in terms of Dundee this season, they've been excellent. Tony Docherty, he's got a good team up there. Good home form. Um, yeah, brilliant. Um, three goals in 11, was it, 11 minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a, a brilliant comeback and a brilliant three points for Muddle. Sure are. The table looks like this. Celtic on 75 points after 32 games. Rangers one behind, 74. They play Dundee. We'll talk about that in the second hour probably quite a lot uh, 74 points then Hearts on 59 after that win Kelly on 48 after the win St Mirren 43 and then um, in next position is Dundee but of course they've got the game with Rangers and a huge game with Aberdeen next weekend because Hibs on 38 they lost at the weekend so they're still in the mix there and so are Motherwell 36 points huge game for them this coming weekend uh, then Aberdeen on 36 then St Johnson 31 Ross County 27 Livingston anchored on uh, what 18 points Mark yeah I mean Livingston are away Paul I couldn't yeah. believe that start there 1-1 in 24 yeah my god I game. mean um, they've been really poor this season really have I mean, you, you can't try and dress it up but it's just not worth them at all they're, they're down and um, Ross County well, they're, they're, they're running out of games and what a blow that is for Ross County but credit to St Johnston what a brilliant win um, at Easter Road to go and beat um, Hibs and the Aberdeen picking up another um, vital point I think for Ross County Paul when they're looking at those post-split fixtures coming out what they'll be wanting to see right away is game one give us St Johnston yeah. let's mm -hmm. try and get them in game one of the five so that we, you know, we, we, we try and give ourselves a chance and Mark at the weekend then in the championship in Barry 2 big win for Dundee United Barry that was a real message wasn't it winning 5-0 against Queen's Park Yep, and Callum's done a brilliant job since yeah. he's he's come into Queen's Park. But that was a, that's a massive, massive yeah. result for Dundee United. Um, that, that surely, I, I, I'm sure Jim Goodwin will hope that's going to give them a massive confidence boost. I'm sure the week before playing Ross County, up, uh, sorry Ross County, Wraith Rovers, um, winning two 0 it just shows you they've got a, a bit of confidence now. And this is when it's um, it's at the nitty gritty stage now and. They're certainly showing their, their quality done United. 
Louis Moult, what a, a spell Brilliant. he's on. Uh, I think yeah. they, they sing like gold, don't they? The Spandau yeah, Ballet hit, which you could sing if you want. Yeah, uh, I love, I love Spandau it. Ballet. Oh, it's great, isn't One it? One of my favourite yeah. bands, Spandau Ballet. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Louis Moult, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what a signing he's been. Yeah. A lot of people said his legs were going poor. I know a lot of managers looked mm. at him, um, but he's been absolutely, he's, he's excelled uh, in the championship. He really has. And, and I think, as Barry pointed out, beating uh, Race Rovers mm. last weekend. Yeah. Going to Hamden and winning convincingly on Saturday, I think that's a title in the bag. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Hey! hey. hey. It's, only, it's only when you leave, but, no, but anyway. Uh, uh, were you behind the barricades <laughs> if you were there at the game? You didn't go. <laughs> and then Race Rovers. Oh, I know, exactly. Too old for them. Barry, Race Rovers still hanging in there. Yeah, and yeah. L- listen, it's, um, it was a big result for uh, Race Rovers as yeah. well. Are United, sure. they're in good, uh, a fair, um, good form. So good three points for them. I think it's still going to get right down to the wire, Paul. I'll be honest with you. But Dundee United, I mean, that's two big, huge results from over the last couple of weeks. Let's hear from the big two, the managers. Uh, such an early goal, 21 seconds. Brendan Rodgers? It was a symbol of our intent right from the off. You know, we got a, we got a goal from our pressing and, and Dizan is there, giving the, the full-back no time and he presses it and obviously it, uh, it goes in. But, but you'll always take that. So... Um, so yeah, so you get one nil up in the game, then of course, then uh, that can always give you confidence away from home. And then the second, the penalty from Zapanenka really wasn't it, which takes a, a bit of bottle or foolhardy, but it worked for Matt O'Reilly two nil at half time. And the manager talked about they could have scored more. Yeah, it could have been. I've been here before, and we've been good in games and, and scored more, and we had that opportunity again today to do that. The combination playing at times and the speed in the top line to get in behind was we were very very good and. Uh, like I say, just just that maybe that link pass or that final ball to get in, just uh, maybe missing for him. Jack Buckingham made an incredible save uh, as well uh, off of uh, off of Matt's header. So uh, so yeah. So in terms of performance, I uh, you know I can't be uh, I can't be critical because I think we we showed lots of really good moments, real courage in the game. They get the lift from the penalty, which and then you expect that you know you know partisan crowd back in the team. Uh, knowing that they're a direct team, they play up and play forward early. So we had to stand up to that and cope with that. And I thought the players did that really well. Barry, what are you thinking? Uh, watching the game, I mean, Maeda got himself into some brilliant positions. It just lacked that bit of quality. Um, and he does that. That's one thing that you could say about Maeda. Listen, he's, he's lightning, very direct. But just that wee bit of quality yeah, in the yeah. final third. If Celtic had that, it could have been worse in the first half for Rangers yeah. that, that's yeah. one of the positions Paul and I know Celtic have got whatever it is in their books five or six winners but well, wingers uh, that's a, that's a, an area of the field whatever side the manager f- feels needs it most or perhaps both sides they need to improve on mm-hmm. I, know it was, I know it was Nicholas Coon's first old fun game I thought he was largely anonymous um, yeah. to, to be honest and then Maida so good at some things and then so frustrating and other things but you know if you're identifying positions that you need to upgrade on, then for me, Celtic in the wide areas is, is, is one of them. He had one chance, which if he'd hit it the way Matondo did, I see Matondo said, yeah. the manager said to him, uh, did you watch uh, Kevin De Bruyne yeah. and the way he scored? And he said, I did actually gaffer. He didn't say it like that as well. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was some strike. Because Maeda would be worth how much, Barry? If he well, it wouldn't be at Celtic if he's the, the final, he had that bit of quality in the final third. Um, there's no doubt about it. And Matondo, that, Matondo's got that. He's, he's certainly improved since the managers uh, come in. I just would be disappointed from a Celtic point of view. You, I, I hate seeing defenders allow forwards come into the box. Just stop them from for coming in there. Um, but listen, it's a, a brilliant finish and Joe Hart's got absolute no chance yeah. with it. Let's hear from Philippe Clement. I mean, I'd love to know what he said at half time, but he made the change. Scott Wright came off one way. Imagine, Dallas, but Seema. obviously, I couldn't repeat. Go on. On air. Yeah. But I would get thrown off. Let's see. <laughs> Any hints? I, I, would, I, would, I would imagine he would, would have been angry. There's no Sick doubt about it. Yeah. Yep. No, no doubt about it, because that's. Um, I, I was very surprised. Yeah. Listen, it does affect you when you lose a goal 21 seconds into the game, but I did expect a bit more from. Rangers, um, and that's what I expected. The second half performance, I expected that in the first half, but it just wasn't there. There are moments I can say what I what I say in half time. It's better not that I say it now. It's between me and the dressing room. I'm happy about the the reaction. They showed personality, and I think uh, at the end we are clearly moral winners of this fight, of this game. 
um, with a lot of passion, everything these supporters want, everything this club wants, everything this club is about, they showed in the second half and that they need to show uh, the next couple of weeks also in, a, in every challenge we have. Is that a new trophy, the Morrow Cup? <laughs> I did wonder, I thought that was but great. I don't think he recognised yeah. that that was his team in the first half. Yeah. And, and sometimes, Paul, there's nothing up with, with, with letting a, or having a few choice words. I think um, it's still important to have that. And I would imagine that it would have been a fiery 10 minutes he had in the dressing room with the players because it was a different Rangers team in the mm-hmm. second half. There's, um, there's no doubt about it. And they showed real good character, togetherness um, and a good spirit. And that's what they needed because Celtic were dominant in, in the first half. Yeah, I mean, I, again, Paul, I'll, I'll go back to my point. I mean, near the top of the show, but I think there's two narratives in the pit. You can take a mix of both. The comeback, so, you know, you can really praise Rangers for the comeback. Of course you can. When they're going to Celtic Park, um, when it's going to be May the 11th, May the 12th, um, I would be saying, Lundstrom Canny Bay is bad. Mm-hmm. Again, corner goals. And I think as well, whether Rangers win the league or not, I'm talking about Celtic having to upgrade. Um, if, I'm, if, if I'm Philippe Clermont, I'm thinking to, to next season. I think I need to be doing. I'm thinking to myself. I really need to strengthen my back four. I really need to strengthen my back four in terms of being title winners. And I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. probably it's good the captain in many ways. But my central defensive partnership, Connor Goldson, also left back aerial need to be looked at anyway. If Barisic is going, even if if, if you know if Yomaz uh, is going to be there, but you really need to be looking at going. You'd also look to say, and I know Lundstrom's been brilliant. Yeah. But you need a big performance. Lundstrom's got to go and say, no, I am the man. I am the man. I do deserve a mega box contract. I am the man to be the heart and soul of your team. I'm the man to really bring on Diamande and bring this young man uh, through uh, into Rangers and, and, and be with him on, on the pitch. So there's a lot of things as well, bigger picture, that Philippe Camon will be, will be looking at. And I'm sure he's learned as well a couple of things like, if they can, and I don't know what kind of money's involved for Sima, but if they can go yeah. and make that deal happen yeah um, I think he's a big player yeah. massive player I know he's been out for a while but you've seen the difference he made he's he's just very direct and, and you need that um, and again I always go back to it. defenders hate pace yeah. and that's one thing that he's got but listen he has one that I'm sure that Rangers he might be too expensive because I'm hearing that might be 7 or 8 million pound but I, I'm yeah. sure they'll be talking to Brighton and saying listen if we can't pay that with it another year's loan um, but I would imagine there'll be some teams interested in him because he's certainly since he's come up to Scotland he's, he's, um, his form's been excellent When you look at the ratings in the paper Mark that you have used to have to do Barry you've never had to do it you never will but I was just looking you know the record this morning uh, the Sun Glasgow Times and you look at it the Rangers team from Jack Butlin 5 Tavernier 5 Goldson 5 Suter 5 Sterling 6 Lundstrom 6 Diamandi six, Lawrence four, Scott Wright four, Silva five, six for Desers. You look at Celtic, the St. Joe Hart six, Alistair Johnson six, Cameron Carter Vickers eight, probably man of the match, Scales six, Taylor six, Awata six, O'Reilly seven, Hatati six, Kuhn, he's given him five, Dyson Maida seven. Uh, Mark Hashi, six. It's <laughs> not him there. It is the hardest thing to do, Barry, isn't it? But sometimes I always look at them and see, and you get a sense that you know. Paul, Paul she's, and, and I'm not look because I, I know that supporters <laughs> want to read it and and, and play. I don't know about nowadays because I'm not involved in it. But you know, back in the day, you know, players would you know you you get a text, a phone call. You only get well, thanks for giving me a nine. Or you know nothing about the game. You only gave me a four. But where you had so you, the match? So you, 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 I, but I think you know. Um, yeah. it's impossible yeah. and you know yourselves we all know it's impossible to judge 22 players yeah. absolutely impossible when you're trying to do a live match yeah. and find it. so in some I take the ratings with a pinch, pinch of salt, salt. but they do, they do matter in the grand scheme yeah. of things believe me when I say this yeah. players look at them yeah. I always yeah. looked at them yeah, did you get them on a Sunday morning and go, or did you get it late at night then if you're back it was me it was the... texting no, <laughs> <really wanted to. laughs> by the way I think I, I, I think I've said, night, that, I, I've maybe said this before yeah. I, I think Paul doing the Sunday meal nearly uh-huh. 20 years I think only gave out two tens or three tens one was definitely uh-huh. him I think one is uh-huh. Stan uh, Petrov and maybe, maybe a Brian Loudrup uh, okay. get one but I mean uh, you had to be um, buying but, but of course yeah. as, as I said earlier 
It's impossible to judge it properly. <laughs> Over I told you he knows the game, didn't I? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to do it occasionally for the Sunday Mail, and I'd get sent to one of the Diddy games, so I would be at, you know, I wouldn't even say where, and I'm trying, I didn't even know which team it was. <laughs> the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team, and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. Our turn, there's loads of calls coming in after the derby. 3-3 yesterday in front of 50,000 Rangers fans and millions watching worldwide, I would imagine, on Sky. It's one of the biggest audiences they get. Bigger, I think, than maybe Liverpool Man Yours, maybe just matched by that, of course, which was on uh, yesterday as well. But there's nothing, Barry, I completely agree with you, like ours. It'll be good next season that there's more fans in. It just shows you when you're two down yesterday, it, it kind of goes against you in some ways, doesn't it? If you've got opposition fans, you know, it, it must be strange when you lose two goals, yeah, you're two down. In terms of the fans yesterday, uh, they, they made... Um, they made it known that they weren't happy with yeah. the performance, mm. Paul. And sometimes as a player, you've got to get that for the stands. Um, and I, I'm sure the players would have walked in into the dress room and says, listen, the, the fans are not happy with there. We need to put a, a better performance um, together in the second half. And they, they certainly done it. And they were a real driving force in the second half, the, mm. the Rangers fans. Um, as soon as uh, Tav put away that penalty, you could just feel it for the stands. <laughs> and I had a good sense that Rangers maybe uh, get it back but listen they get it to 2-2 and then they give a goal straight away um, but right after it a big roar come up and the fans got right behind them and, and I'm sure that's what drove them to getting that, that vital point Paul because at half time I was unsure it could happen really? did you? yeah I mm. had yep. yeah but it was um, it wasn't the Rangers that I've been watching the last six months that, that's for sure but listen the response they gave in the second half is what you want to see for a Rangers team um, and they certainly done that. Let's hear from the managers. Here's Philippe Clement saying, saying about his team that they never stop. It's a big step forward that we we don't go in these negative emotions, but we keep on pushing until the end. But it's it's hard uh, to score a goal, but it's disallowed because uh, yeah, 80 yards of uh, of the goal there's a fall made. I saw it back afterwards, and it's it's not a big fall, but you can give it a fall. So. Nothing to say about that, um, but we continue now, and that's a really big step forward with a few months ago. We never stop if the scenario goes not our way. We never stop believing and, and going full to get the scenario our side. So that's a thing you need in, uh, in a team of real winners. That's what we've been talking about a lot last couple of months. I want to see real winners, and winners never give up, and that is all dressing room show today. So... It's a, it's a very important victory. Mark, they certainly did. They never stopped second half. Uh, the first half, they didn't really get started. It was the game of two halves. Yeah, <clears throat> um, it was. You know, Celtic were really, really good. Um, probably as good as they've played at Ibrox in, in, in any game you care to mention the first one. If I, probably the frustration for Celtic would be they actually didn't score at least one goal more. That said, I think Conor Goldson's missed a sitter. Um, yeah. header. I mean, he really should have scored five, six yards out. Um, however, it, it was near perfect, you know, tactically from the from the manager, um, uh, from uh, from Brendan Rodgers, and then Rangers. You know, you were always going to have a chance, Paul, if you managed to get a goal. Even if Rangers scored the first goal in eighty-five minutes or something, having the crowd behind you was always going to give them that that kind of wave, and they used it to their advantage. The substitutions um, worked well because there was too many of the starting eleven. Even somebody like like Tom Lawrence, I thought, was way off it um, yeah. yesterday as well. But they came on, they kept going. They were because oh, we used the word often when it was Ange Postecoglou Celtic relentless. Rangers were relentless yesterday in the second half. They were relentless because the Celtic pen back, you know, for for ninety five percent in that 45, 50 minutes. So yeah, you've got to give them credit um, for their comeback um, but that said they had a chance in, <laughs> on their own patch 
in my opinion, to put the title to bed and they didn't do it. So it's it's still wide open. When you make substitutions, they have to make an impact. And that's what the substitutions done yesterday for Rangers. There's no doubt they made that they made a difference, Paul. Uh, the one at half time, Seema coming on. He stretched the game very direct and obviously Cantwell and Matondo coming on and having a an effect and that that's what you want. That's why you have a big squad, Paul. Sometimes players don't play at the level you would you would expect. And then it's when you make the changes, they have to come on and make a difference. And certainly the the Rangers substitutions yesterday did um, do that. It's not often with six and seven games to go that it's both managers can say it's in our hands. Well, yeah, and that's all we needed to make sure we come out here today. Of course, we, we come in to win the game. That's what we, we want to do. But when I see how we play today and knowing that in a few weeks' time we're going to be even better, some of the guys getting more fitness and the guys that are coming back. Um, and, and for us, really, we, we have still a job to do in the other games, but... We, we play Rangers at home and, um, and with our own back and our own crowd and play to our level in our football then um, yeah we, uh, we, we're, we're pleased with today and, and hopefully then we can use that going forward The other thing as well Paul which is great both managers sound very very confident that, that their team's going to win the title which is great to hear Gary are you confident in the Gorbals good evening Evening guys how are we doing? Yeah good thank you pretty good what are you thinking are you going to win the title now or did you blow it yesterday, or what do you feel? A wee bit of both, to be honest, because I think if we came out of there with a 3-2 win, then I would have been a lot more confident. I do still think that we've got enough in the tank based on yesterday's performance. I know it was a game of two halves, and Rangers were much in the second half, it much more improved. It was, a, listen, it was like one of the best derby games I've seen in years. Uh, I can't remember a, a more entertaining game. I'm obviously gutted to lose the late goal, but... I, just disappointed with, with uh, the refereeing performance, to be honest, between John Beaton and Nick Walsh. I think they got a lot of things wrong yesterday. Specifically what? Well, I mean, to be honest, the fact, if you go but right back to the kind of start of the game, Nicholas gets booked and John Beaton points to three areas of the park. Mm-hmm. Now, unless I was watching a different game, I yeah. think he's getting mixed up with Carter Vickers mm-hmm. uh, kind of challenges and things on the ball, but he was a bit quick with the yellows. Yep. Sorry, he was a bit quick with the yellows watching it. Yep, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And then you look at you know, when you you look at the decisions after that, I think he books Alistair Johnson for absolutely nothing. You know, Fabio Silva it for me, Fabio Silva is a player that's impressed me in Scottish football so far. But after yesterday I'm of the opinion that we don't need players like him in Scottish mm-hmm. football if that's who wants if that's the way he wants to behave. As Barry said earlier it wouldn't have happened in his day. It would have probably got slaughtered yeah. for it, but that's the stage we're at in football nowadays. That's the kind yeah. of players we've got. Was, is that fair? He was a bit trigger happy with the yellows early on. Kuhn, were you surprised? Um, hey, Johnson, and, O'Reilly and Maida. I mean, Kuhn can count himself fortunate for being booked, but then I think Cameron Vickers, yeah, Carter Vickers mm-hmm. can count himself fortunate that he wasn't he booked. So, um, no, I wouldn't specifically have a, a pop at uh, John, John Beaton in terms of the... Yeah. Uh, the yellow cards uh, I just think that there was other decisions that he missed See, the one that I think I'll be most disappointed in is the the, the foul um, that was right in front of him that led to Rangers yeah. scoring and then it was it was chopped off but uh, over the piece I don't think he had a, a great game John Beaton but I don't think he had a bad game mm. Gary can you play this way against the other teams then because Celtic let's say against Kilmarnock when you look at the games coming up in the last Five. So there's one more next weekend, St Mirren at home. What are you thinking about the Kelly game, for example? Um, it's, it's obviously going to be a tough game. That one, it's, it's always a tough game regardless. But I think the job Derek McInnes has done, mm-hmm. I think, has, has been excellent. And they're probably unlucky that they're, they're not in third place at the moment. Do you know what I mean? They'll be well up for it, but we need to be well up for it. And we need to, we need to start games earlier. We need to start games better earlier. And when if we do happen to get an early goal, like under Ange, just go and finish the game, you know, and, and get the three points because as I say, we're well capable of winning six games on the spin and obviously the Rangers game will be difficult, but and it, they all will be difficult. I'm yeah. not I'm not saying there's there's any easy games, but I just think as I say, like based on yesterday's performance, that's that's as good a performance at Ibrox as I've seen from any Celtic team, to be fair. As I say, it was just I know mm-hmm. Mark was uh, Mark was saying about the I didn't think the bookings were were that bad to be honest. I think Matt O'Reilly's is, is a joke on Diamandi. Um and I think that the fact that 
the penalty that he gives is never a penalty in a month for Sundays. Um, and the fact that he goes to VAR, he gets asked to go to VAR, when he's, he's seen it and he knows that it's not a penalty. See, see in your opinion, yet, Gary, to sorry, VAR, Gary, just to, uh-huh. to, to clear up, why do you think it's not a penalty? Just to be clear. Well, I think for a, I think for a start, I think Alistair Johnson gets a touch in the ball. It's yeah, that, that, that's the point. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Ball. Do you think he's touched yeah. it? Because I think yeah. if he has made contact, and I think he does, but I, I couldn't say conclusively, Paul, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think he has. And for me, if he makes contact with the ball, then there's no way it's a penalty kick. Yeah. Barry, but, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I think I think he's I think he's okay. unfortunate. Yeah. You know, Johnson's got this habit of being involved in, yeah. in Rangers penalties. Yeah. And as, as much as I think the last one, uh, you know, with the handball was a penalty, I yeah. thought this was nowhere near a penalty. I think the I get what you're saying, Mark, that you know, the the angles that they were showing you yesterday I don't think were great in terms of but from what I've seen today it's it's definitely he's definitely got a touch and I think he's he's pulling his leg back and I think okay. Silva's already in his way down. Um I just think Beaton needs to be stronger in his own decision making rather than somebody telling him that he thinks it's a penalty, thinks he's got it wrong. Barry, maybe the message for Celtic fans is so they had the chances to kill off Rangers because three 0 at half time. Yeah, they been were different. very dominant yeah. in the first half, Paul, yeah. and I think that will be part of the like yeah. Gary's frustration yeah. and other Celtic fans because um, they, they, they did control the vast majority of that first half. And, and um, you hear Brendan Rodgers doing his, his presser, Paul. Yeah. He's disappointed that they never at least got one other uh, goal on top of the two that they got in the in the first half because they, they were. Um, Listen, you know what's going to happen. You're going to 2-0. You know that there's going to be a a reaction for the Rangers team because basically the performance was well below par. Thanks for the call, Gary. Kevin's on the line. Good evening, Kevin. Hello, mate. How you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, thank uh, you. Uh, so, what are you thinking? Uh, I just thought yesterday, um, the first the first half, Celtic were absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. I thought we, we we dominated them and. It was just the case of didn't take any chances. I think if we were four or five and a half at half time, Rangers couldn't have complained. But it's Rangers, Rangers in the second half, you expect them to come back in. Yeah, I thought they played really well. I thought it was a really good game. But I think that over the piece, if you take the two halves and uh, separately, I thought Celtic played the much better football. I'm not worried about Rangers whatsoever. I think, it's, I think based on yesterday, I'm confident we can win our last six games and win this league. I, don't see, I didn't see anything off Rangers. To worry me yesterday. They've got a, they've got. Look, if you look at the three goals, they've got a penalty. There's no penalty. They've got a deflected goal, and an absolutely amazing finish from Matondo. But schoolboy defending for Yang. So I didn't see much. For, it's not as if Rangers so hard it was uh, save after save, or yeah. Rangers were missing chance after chance. Apart from the goals, I can't really remember any chances that they had. Mark. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say though, Kevin, yeah. you, 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 you've, yeah. you've called your opinion in the Rangers three goals, which is fair enough. Uh, but you want to flip it. Celtic's first goal was a freak, <laughs> you know, a freak deflection. Second goal was a penalty, uh, and the third one's a, a, a lovely finish from Adamina. Although I, I would question uh, Jack Butland. But anyway, you're saying you're no worried about about Rangers the next six games. Well, Rangers are they are they a concern if you're Celtic because it's not like you're playing Rangers six mm-hmm. times. You're playing them once. And your biggest barrier, uh, Kevin, I don't know if you agree, if you assess the season so far, the biggest barrier is your own team. Your own team's lack of consistency, not killing teams off, not defending Aye. leads properly. So, you know, as you say, you, you might not be concerned about Rangers, but Brendan Rodgers will not be thinking about them until the next Old Firm game comes around. It's actually your team doing their job and, and being consistent and, and, and doing enough to, to, to get over the line. Because it's so unusual this season, Barry, that Celtic have dropped points against the likes of St. Johnson. Um, we know about Kilmarnock, Hearts. I, I think Celtic struggle against teams who sit back, yeah. ten mm-hmm. men behind the ball. Um, I, th- I thought that kind of suited them in the first half. That's the best I have seen Celtic in a while, if I'm being honest with yeah. you. It's just I think Brendan Rodgers' Rogers concern will be when teams that come and park the bus. I think Celtic then struggle uh, to get through teams. It's going to be some finish though, isn't it? There's no question. I know what you mean, Kevin, and I think Celtic have been kind of, they've not been on it that much this season, but the way they played in that first half, I think what you're saying is, play like that and Celtic will retain the title. Aye, yeah? play like that and we'll win the league, we'll, we'll, win, we'll win all our six games. 
nobody's got to stop us if we play like that. Even Rangers, I'm very confident. And really delighted with the game yesterday, with the performance yesterday. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you're two on up at half time, you're in, in any other yeah. game of the season, you're absolutely fuming. You've you've no one. But I said to my mate at half time, see at half time, two two and a half's a bad scoring because see if Rangers get the next goal, they're at home, the back end, two and a half's not a big, no two two and a half's a dodgy scoring. We needed a third, and we it didn't come. But listen, good well done to both teams. It was a great advert for Scottish football. I'm not going to come on and moan about referees and all that. There's absolutely no point in doing that. Yeah. So, may the best team win. Good luck to everybody. Kevin, good call. Thanks yeah. so much, Mark. I mean, you know what it means when when it's two up? Just one goal back in it and then <laughs> yeah. the, the crowd come alive at Ibrox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been that Your yeah. team being two up. But I get what, I get what, uh, what Kevin means. Yeah. But look, as Paul, the, the thing is, Kevin's confident and, and you totally understand his confidence. I get it. Rangers are confident. Both managers uh, are confident. The thing is, come May the 18th, there'll need to be a loser. There's only one of them sure. can stand holding that trophy um, on May the 18th, and that and that's what's brilliant. And the great thing is, it all kicks off again on Wednesday night. Oh, Dens Park, mm-hmm. you know, we're back in here, yeah. and then we've got the, a weekend of fixtures: Celtic at home in St Mirren, mm-hmm. Rangers in Dingwall on Sunday. Uh, on Sunday. Yeah. So, and um, we've got Scottish Cup semi finals potentially, an old firm Scottish Cup final. Yeah. Uh, it's wow. brilliant what, mm. a, what a six weeks we're going to have we're genuinely we're in for a treat all of us Barry we're in for a treat well, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. see as a yeah. player like, if I'm going for a Rangers point of view and yeah. I, I'm sitting in that desk room I, I know what's in front of me mm. I know what I need to do I need to win seven games so it's it's important that the players understand that and I'm sure the Celtic guys will be saying the same thing well what we need to do is we need to make sure we win our six games yeah. Um, so yeah, look, I'm 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 excited about it, and for a Rangers point of view, I don't think Rangers can play as badly as they did in the first half. Um, but then again, I look at it, and you've got to something, you've got to credit the opposition. For the first half hour, they were very very dominant. Yeah. Celtic. Stephen's been on saying credit to Joe Hart. What a ball! And. 18 seconds or, or yeah. for the, for the yeah. open uh, for teams the on goal. the socials that go football show would that be fair as a former goalkeeper? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got to be dealt with I, 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 I mean I think again just reflecting Barry is I take it James Tavernier is thinking when he's clocked at first I think he's yeah. got a lot of time then he's called oh, Maeda's on me and he's thinking he's caught in two minds do I send it back to the goalie or do I play it out by the time he's going to play it out he's just been too slow but you've got to be aware of the situation you're in if I'm running back towards that goal I, I know who I'm up against me the who yeah. chases everything mm-hmm. doesn't he mm-hmm. so I'm doing it as quick as possible I get there I thought I, I think he's took his eye off the ball a wee bit mm-hmm. he's relaxed because it's maybe that early in the game no you've just got to deal with it get it back to Joe Hart eh, sorry back to Jack Butland mm-hmm. or just clear it out the park so he'll be very disappointed in that. It was a, it was a poor goal to, goal to lose. We're going on the lines next. We've got Robert, a Rangers fan, coming in about 90 seconds. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team. Recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Robert is on the line. He's called 0808 17 17 700, a Rangers fan. Hi, Robert. Good evening. Hi, thanks for having me on, guys. Not at all. How are you, Robert? Good, thanks. Yourselves? Yeah, I think pretty good, good form. Robert. Yep. Barry's coming round. Yep. Yeah, I'm a wee bit tender yeah. then about the edges. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything earlier. Yeah, you've I knew you were having no, a wee dig. No, 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 no you've recovered. That's, that's, um, that's an on 25 minutes. <laughs> I had your back. I waited while you were uh, maybe heading towards the door but now he's in good form Robert what are you thinking after the 3-3 yesterday um, on Sunday I've never had the kind of emotions the high and lows of that game that I've, I've never had that emotion in a, in a long time watching a game of football um, yeah. I think from a Rangers point of view we were off in the first half and Celtic deservedly uh, yeah. were, were comfortable com- comfortable leaders in the, in the first half and mm-hmm. um, Second half, you you get back in the game at two all, and the most frustrating part for me is I think Mark touched on it earlier. The defence is a bit leaky, and conceding a goal two minutes after getting yourself back to two all, mm-hmm. I think if we could if we could hold on for a couple of minutes more, Celtic were definitely on the ropes. And with the eight minutes stoppage time, I think we could have well and get a winner. So that's a, a bit of a frustration. 
from that point of view. Yeah, the emotion he's never felt like that the way they yeah. felt the first yeah, half. I mean, I yeah, I think, you know, I don't know if Rob was in the stadium and he's watched it in telly or he's listened to go or whatever, but yeah, you can imagine you've been through the, you've been through the ringer. Uh, yeah. Paul, there's no uh, doubt, but it is a great point uh, he makes, you know, that like, for Rangers' point of view, to get back to 2 2. And then concede a goal, you know, cut him out. And again, I'm just like, mean, you can see what Paolo Bernardo is going to do, the pass, you know, the way that, that, that he does just peel them. That's what I'm saying. I think at that point, should be John Suter, should be defending that 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 pass uh, better. That's a bigger picture point from Philippe Clemon yeah. and Ruthless. Is that defence good enough? I don't think it is, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest. Um, but then, of course, M- Matondo pop, pops up with a, with a world mm-hmm. day. But it was, just a, it was a brilliant game. Paul, you, you, you can nitpick, you can create different narratives depending on what way you want to go. But over the piece, um, it's very rare that as much both sets of fans are frustrated that they're also kind of happy for different circumstances, which is which is unusual on the back of an old firm game. Barry, you always say the midfield is so important. Mm-hmm. First half, Celtic won that battle. Yep. I mean, I know the the first goal was you know unusual, but thereafter. Rangers didn't get a grip in the midfield. No, they they, they struggled, Paul. They, they certainly got a grip in the, the yes, second it. half. Um, and let, I, I was I was put through the ringer yesterday, yeah. uh, no doubt about it. Um, and then when you get that equaliser at eighty six, you're thinking, right, you can go on and and hopefully get that winger. Then to concede a minute after you score, um, he'll, he'll be bitterly disappointed. Way certainly the first half performance and obviously giving away. Uh, that goal uh, a minute after you obviously get the equaliser back you thinking it was going to be like Chelsea Man U the other night yeah I just yeah. felt when Seema yeah. got that goal I know it was a deflection but you're thinking right now there's as a high mm. possibility you can go on and, and get that winner so he yep. concede so close after getting the equaliser back um, it's pretty frustrating and yet to be fair Mark Celtic could have come back as well you know they could have because the Ida goal I don't think you expected that did you? No I mean yeah. when, when Rangers have gone uh, to get it back to 2-2 yeah. two, two, Paul mm. if, you, if you offered me a free bet free bet there and then mm. for a winner I'm going Rangers mm. all day long I'm going uh, partly because I tipped 3-2 on Friday night uh, to Rangers <laughs> 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 no, I, uh, but uh, for me at that point yeah. there's only one winner so that's you've got to credit Celtic for, for then keeping their composure Finding a lovely pass, albeit I don't think the Rangers defended it particularly well. But credit to Celtic for the goal. And then Matondo popping up. So just look, all in all, yeah. absolutely brilliant stuff. Robert, you clearly still... Where are you on the title now? So Barry's 50-50, Mark's 51-49 Celtic. What do you feel? Uh, I definitely think it's 50-50. I was looking at the, the league table earlier on. And yeah. Going to in, split. We're going to have tough games because you're, you're, you're going to have some who I want to try and catch Kilmarnock in fourth place and then next place from Dundee, Hibs or Motherwell they'll want to try and get that European place so I don't think yeah. there's going to be any easy games up until I think people are looking at Celtic Park but I think you've got a lot lot of football before then um, and I think Celtic Park will kind of take care of itself I think you need to take care of the, the games against other teams as well which by and large Rangers have been able to do. I mean, I said, have Rangers got a Celtic problem at the moment? Have Celtic got a Celtic problem in that they don't kill off these other teams? I think it's fascinating. Barry, Mark was asking about Conor Goldson. He's been brilliant for Rangers. Um, you mentioned Tavernier, um, John, John Suter. A Rangers, they've got to get the best out of these people between now and the end of the season. And do you think in the summer they will be investing? Yeah, look, I think he's a type of manager that looks at the spine of his team. And that's yeah. the most important part of your, your team. Goalkeepers, centre-back, central midfielders and centre-forward. And I think that is areas of the pitch that Rangers will look to strengthen. Ben Davis looks if he's out the picture. Obviously, yeah. Balligan's a year older. Mm. Connor Golson, I, I think Connor's what, 31, 32. Mm. So I, I do think the, the centre-back area is somewhere I think the manager will look to strength, uh, strengthen also. Would you agree with that, Robert? Uh, yeah, definitely. Can I just uh, touch on a point that sure. Mark made earlier on? Yes. Um, that he thinks it's a penalty because he's touched the ball. Uh, I'm not too sure if he's watched the, the Brighton Arsenal game on Saturday night when Gabriel Jesus yeah. uh, squares up uh, Lamptey mm-hmm. and he kind of flicks over him, but he does get a touch of the ball. But then his follow through uh, does take out uh, Gabriel mm-hmm. and Arsenal get a penalty. So. Does that mean just because you touched the ball, it's automatically a foul? No, because what what I said was, um, Robert, if there's contact in the ball, and I think there is, but I, de- I genuinely couldn't say conclusively, but I think there's been a slight touch in the ball. So then my, my point after that, 
is that if he's touched the ball, then I think Silva is going in to a uh, Johnston rather than Johnston going in to take Silva out. So Alistair Johnston's um, uh, main aim is to tackle and win the ball. So when, when, when Silva slipped it down the side, I think he's got a wee touch and then Silva is, is going into him. So for me, the most important part of that is did he make contact with the ball? If he has, I don't think it's a penalty. If Alistair Johnson's not made contact with the ball, then I think it is a penalty. Do you think Alistair Johnson needs to go to ground? No, he probably does. Mm. I, I was actually surprised to hear Brendan Rodgers kind of praising uh-huh. Alistair Johnson. I think no, he, he's got to be, um, be be better. And also as well, he's got to be more aware of Silva in terms of what Silva's mm. capable of. Yeah. Mindset. I think it's, it's yeah. Not, yeah, I think it's all subjective as well. I think, I think a, a good thing would be from from next year if we could get some perspective from the referees and why they've made the decisions and I think it would become more clearer and I think it would make the product a lot better as well yeah. for, the, yeah. for the fans yeah, to understand what's, what's going on Good yeah. shout Robert yeah. So but you think 50-50 now between now and the end of the season it is going to be Brilliant. amazing yeah, yeah. Great. yeah What's your gut, gut instinct then? You've got one trophy you're going to get two you're going to stay on one you're going to get three what do you think? I think it's very difficult to get to get the treble. Obviously, yeah. we've got a good record against Hearts at, at Hamden, so I'm pretty confident with that sure. one. Um, but the league, I feel like uh, you just have. To, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but I think you just need yeah. to take it game by game, and then see where you are when you come to the park. Yeah, it's just a, a bit like yeah. in, in all our thoughts, and, and, and including Robert. Do you think? Do you think it is going to be decided on the last day on Saturday, May the eighteenth? Or do you think it'll be? Do you think there'll be a winner before that? Or do you think it is absolutely going down to the last ninety minutes of the season? Might uh, need to see I the f- fixtures. Yeah, but okay. So yeah, Robert, you I go. Think, yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, that's all right. I think it can it can go down to the wire. I think it just depends on how how you perform against other teams, whether you take maximum points and uh, and, and what happens at, at Celtic mm. Park. Barry, your helicopters are going to be busy that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> would you think right to the if end? If you're pushing me for yes. I, yes. I, I think Rangers will do it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Before the last day? Mm. Yeah. Need to see the fixtures. 50 50. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think for Rangers, the worry is after yesterday, Celtic, you know, I've come away with a point. And then, no. Paul, see, yeah. been, been sure. at the game, yeah. and I don't know if Robert was at the game or watching it on TV, sitting there. I'm thinking to myself, well, do you know what? I, I need to see how they're going to react in the second mm-hmm. half because I, I think if you ask a manager, you ask the vast majority of Rangers fans, that is the poorest that I have seen the Rangers team in a long, long time. Um, and I think previous to that, they would have struggled to get it back. Oh, I, I would. Yeah, I it's, know there's a total that. different mindset yeah. about the, the group of players. When you don't play at the level that you're expected, you always need to try and find a way to get a result. Mm-hmm. And this is what this Rangers team are doing. Yeah, I think <laughs> King City Wednesday night, Paul. That, that this is where you say right, okay, yeah. Wednesday night. What we? It was a brilliant fight back mm-hmm. on Sunday. Again, depend what narrative you want to go with, or do what we've got away with one yeah. to get that point because of how poor we won the first half. Whatever way you want to paint it, but Wednesday night again. So here's an opportunity for Rangers, the game in hand, mm-hmm. to go and put daylight between themselves and Celtic mm-hmm. to actually go yeah, top of the sure. table with six games to go if you can do that I think it's a clear message uh, if you don't then obviously it's going to raise question marks But uh, and I'm, I know I'm saying Rangers were poor I thought Celtic were very mm. good yeah. so that, that was maybe mm. down to it and sometimes that happens Paul within games that you, you're not producing what you, you're expected of but it's how you react or respond course, whatever yeah. way you want to put it and they certainly reacted in the right manner in the second half. You probably think Rangers can't play as bad again until the end of the season. Yeah, but you've got and to put that sometimes Celtic uh, were sure. better. And Celtic have got the big players back, apart from Callum McGregor, because mm-hmm. we heard Brendan Orr just saying they've got the big players back. Callum McGregor probably the only but I one. I thought in the second half, yeah. I thought Rangers were a better team in the second yeah, half. for sure. Um, no doubt about it. And this is a big one on Wednesday. I mean, I'm just uh, checking the, sure. the, the, weather. Yeah, the weather. The weather for the Dundee. How yeah. is it? Like Tomorrow. He, yeah. 80% chance of rain, right. 90% chance on, on Wednesday. Oof. The it, surface didn't look great at all, no, did you? Watching the, the, the pictures in sports. Can we stay on really mindset cool. just now? Here's Philippe Clement speaking after the game about his players' mindset. I think there's a big evolution in that. And uh, and they showed something special today. So it's, an again, another experience that we have in the backpack. Or the players have in the backpack. Because I always believed in that, that they have the quality to do it. And they shot in the second half. So, um, 
This doesn't give guarantees, of course, but if you keep on pushing like we did second half, then you can change things around, even against a really good team as Celtic. And you heard earlier Brendan Rodgers saying, yeah, they could have scored more. Yeah, I could have been. I've been here before and we've been good in games and, and scored more and we had that opportunity again today to do that. The combination playing at times and the speed in the top line to get in behind was... We were very, very good and... Uh, like I say, just, just that, maybe that link pass or that final ball to get in, just uh, maybe missing for him. Jack Buckman made an incredible save uh, as well uh, off, of, uh, off of Matt's header. So, uh, so, yeah, so in terms of performance, I, uh, you know, I, can't, be, uh, I can't be critical because I think we, we showed lots of really good moments, real courage in the game. They get the lift from the penalty, which, and then you expect that, you know, you know partisan crowd back in the team. Uh, knowing that they're a direct team, they play up and play forward early. So we had to stand up to that and cope with that. And I thought the players did that really well. And here on the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, we'll be here all the way till the end of the season. And then we've got the Euros. Barry, I'm thinking, you know, I heard you on Friday, you had your Rangers team, which probably most people think was a stronger team than they actually fielded. So is he going to make some changes for Wednesday? Yeah, I think he'll French, yeah. uh, freshen it up on Wednesday yep. no doubt about it and he's generally done that since he's, he's, he's came to Rangers um, freshen it up bit of energy um, and as I said I thought the substitution certainly made a difference yesterday and I would expect A3 to start yep Seema yep. Cantwell and Matondo Matondo of course Matondo is, uh, that was it was some goal Abdallah Seema you can see why he'd scored what was that 15 goals before yeah. he went off months he's ago he's a good player like Seema he? yeah. yeah he's got a real yep. uh, bit about him um, and, he, and he's he's boy, boy isn't he what is he 21 20, 21-22 he's, he is a yeah. he's a boy I mean I don't again there'll, there'll be reasons why he didn't start um, yesterday but um, that, that's by the by nothing you can do about it now but he, he is a big part uh, for Rangers and you know it's a it's a, a real bonus to have him back for the running Wait, when you look at him everybody talks about the offensive part of his game which is really good obviously good speed can score goals it's the dirty side as well he, he's a real team player that's something that I've noticed about him Barry who are you chatting to during it I spoke to Gradle this morning he <laughs> said he saw you brushing shoulders with uh, that's not easy to say um, Billy Gilmer yeah I bumped yeah. into him yep it was good to see him um, obviously hope, hopefully he gets yeah. through this injury because he's a big player Paul for, for Scotland we know it's yeah. coming up in June and hopefully um, the young man's going to be fit um, to go over to, to Germany because he's a big player for Scotland, Billy Gilmer. Um, he's a big part of Steve Clark's yeah. plans. He's a real um, playmaker. But it was good to see him. He's obviously struggling a wee bit with the knee, but hopefully he's back sooner rather than, than later. Yeah, he was there as a boy, as we know, Mark. What a player. Um, Callum McGregor's been out injured. He's back yesterday on the bench. So I'm thinking Scotland as well. Uh, we hope Scotland... I mean, Billy Gilmer is one that would be one of the first names on the on the sheet to go to Germany. Well, the, the, the middle of the park is yep. where we've got a, an abundance mm -hmm. of talent. Um, Paul, you know, we've got five or six top players. You know, mm -hmm. Billy Gilmer, Scott McTominay, John McGinn, all playing their trade uh, in English Premier League. Callum McGregor's captain of Celtic. And you've got Stuart Armstrong, Kenny McLean both doing really well in the championship etc etc so yeah I echo Barry's thoughts first and foremost just for Billy Gilmer um, it would be horrible if, if he missed out on it because you just want to be there be a part of it but also on the park he has the ability to go and make a contribution to help us get into the knockout stages Was he well behaved? Not Billy Gilmer Gredo yeah. was he in good form? <laughs> hey, hey, Gredo was in good he form He was in great form this morning he said the haircut I see I know I've yeah. seen that yeah, Croft hey, he, he was looking sharp Decent tin flute on. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people recognise him now, don't they, as well? <laughs> <laughs> tin flute. Is that yep. what you said? Right, sorry, I'm just checking. Uh, he's in good form with all these shows on the telly and the breakfast show with Crofty tomorrow morning. So looking forward to that. What about your nephew? Uh, yeah. Lewis, he'll be on the, on the flight as well. Juventus now reportedly agreed in principle to sign Thiago Motta, his manager. And where he goes, surely Lewis will go. Yeah, he's been a big part of, yeah. of Lewis's uh, development over in, in, in Bologna. Mm. And I'm sure if he, he goes to um, Juventus, um, I would stick my money on Lewis falling mm. in his footsteps. Up to Turin, uh, uh, that uh, great city. But Mark, you're coming in with a late bid. Another? Uh, uh, yeah. I, you know, I was just going to say, if it does happen, and I even see Thiago Motta was like mm. Man United on Saturday morning, mm. uh, Paul. But generally, I'm just taking a wee step back. Mm. A Scotsman playing for Juventus yeah I know honest to yeah. God it's like wow you know you think back the, 
the guys from these, these uh, you know, you think of Michel Platini yeah. playing for Juventus, sure. Liam Brady, Liam Brady yeah. playing for uh, Juventus, so like, you know, and then local ones, you know, Del Piero and, and all that kind of stuff. But Alberto Baggio. Baggio. Oh, uh, one of the favourites, wasn't it? Buffon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Baggio, yeah. I mean, you think a Scotsman, and by the way, he's not just gone there to make up the numbers. Mm. He's a proper player uh, in Serie A. Uh, quite incredible, mm-hmm. but brilliant. What a brilliant story and, and credit to, to young Lewis for uh, for doing it and, and he's good yeah. enough to go and play there for no sure no doubt in my mind yeah. about that yeah. yep, he's good enough to go and can play can you imagine it. the way he's come on the last two years Barry what mm. could come but in the this manager's year? been a big part of it Paul he was yeah. a fantastic midfielder himself I, I come up against him um, a couple of times good footballer but he was um, he, again he, he knew how to put it about as well good left peg and I think he's been a big part of Lewis development as a as a footballer the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Big show tomorrow night. John Hartson, I think, and Stephen McGinn will be with us. James will correct me if I'm wrong. Barry, you'll be back with us on Wednesday when we will be looking forward, of course, to Dundee against Rangers. And we just hope that the game is on, surely, with four postponements already at Dens Park. Um, I see Motherwell protested that the game went ahead at the weekend. They must have felt that way until 11 minutes to go, and then they won. So, uh, in fact, tomorrow night it's John Hartson and... Oz himself, Craig Moore will be with Oz. us. Yeah, uh, Wednesday night, Barry. Surely this game's going to be on. Yeah, well, I would like to think so, Paul. Um, I, and I'm, I'm trying to think. Obviously, they would need to wait. I, if it isn't on and it's postponed, it would need to be obviously next Wednesday, mm-hmm. next Tuesday. Or, or no, sorry, it would need to be the Wednesday because right. we just played Sunday. Yeah, it would need to yep. be the Wednesday. Yep, and then they would need to do the split after that game. Um, so hopefully. Hopefully the game's on. The surface didn't look too too great, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. It didn't at all, Mark. We no. saw the pictures. Yeah. I, I mean, I know no things are difficult and you know, every, everybody's got budget concerns, so I get that, but just looking at the pitch on the, on Saturday, Paul, the pictures on sports scene on Saturday night, um, well, it's no good. I thought it was like pictures going back to the 70s and 80s, yeah. you know, the way they used yeah. to be and um, uh, hopefully everything will be, will be okay on, on Wednesday night because Dundee will want to get back as well they'll, they'll be in a real downer um, but they want to get back in front of their home fans and what a, what a brilliant game you know live on the telly Rangers coming to town full house at Dens Park both teams really going for it to, to try and achieve uh, different uh, objectives there are there it's going to be some night isn't it for sure <laughs> uh, in Dundee so much to play for yeah you know and they were yeah. two up against Motherwell they will be kicking themselves scoring the goal for a corner indeed that, uh, I know that's yeah. yeah brilliant yeah. Um, brilliant uh, uh, to, to, to do yeah. that yeah what a season he's had for did Dundee. you ever do that Barry did you ever score from a corner no no you didn't no. Yeah. straight question I don't know where I go with that one <laughs> why didn't you no. uh, for Motherwell I know there was the VAR penalty uh, O'Shaughnessy what did you think can you remember that far back it seems ages ago when the I looked handball. at it ah, I yeah. thought it was a wee bit a wee bit harsh I see Paul McGinney's 500th career appearance so Brilliant. great yeah, great yeah, for well, him wasn't it yeah, yeah. he has he's a really good career Paul, you know, a real steady, you know, you know, to work his way up from from Dumbarton to become a, yeah. a full time player, and he did it. St Mirren, uh, Motherwell, and uh, and Dundee. So yeah, real credit to him. Yep, George Gent scored uh, for Motherwell. Tail Bear scoring again to make it two two, and then Moses, the winner in the ninety third minute, taking them into the promised land. It was a great win then for Motherwell. Yeah, it was. You know, and uh, you let to, 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 to Stuart, <laughs> to Stuart uh, Kettlewell, because do you know what, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> for, for probably for about a month, Stuart Kettle was was always just one game away from what, what we thought to be the the sack. So, you know, sometimes the trigger can be pulled too quickly. Other yep. times they don't pull it quick enough. But credit to the Motherwell board and to Stuart Kettlewell and his staff yeah. for getting through it and, and, and getting you know over the piece, getting another great result. <laughs> <laughs> you love laughing at your end jokes, don't you? <laughs> well, nobody else does. <laughs> Moses Promised Land. Right. <laughs> Dundee's Tony Doherty, I'm being bailed out by breaking news. Tony is the Scottish Premiership Manager of the Month. Brilliant. He has done so well, hasn't he, Tony Doherty? He, he's done a yeah. fantastic job, Paul. I mean, he was Derek McInnes' assistant for a long time. He, he took the jump to go and be his own man. Mm. Um, and yeah I, I thought Dundee would have been one of the favourites if I've yeah. been honest with mm-hmm. you so they've got every opportunity um, to make that top six and, and that, that would be a brilliant first season for them 
See, if you were Aberdeen, would you not think, right, they would like Derek McInnes back? That's not happening. I don't know whether or not they did, but it's not happening. Why wouldn't you go for Tony Doherty? He'd love to go back. I don't know if he'd love to go back up there. Dundee fans won't like it. But Mark, would that be a possibility? Yeah, I think we, we, we touched on that uh, three or four weeks ago about the, about the contenders um, and, and Tony Doherty. Why not? Uh, be a name uh, on the list. He's, he's first season and he's been um, absolutely superb. Again, if you look at what he inherited when he took that job, you know, inherited, I think, three players signed, Paul. So he's going to have to build a squad. He's used the loan market superbly well, which is always key uh, for all our clubs. And uh, credit to him and delighted for him to win the manager. It's always nice. I mean, I get it. Most of the time it's going to be the, the Celtic and the Rangers manager. But it's brilliant to see other managers being recognised because they put in a hell of a shift. They sure do. Some good players yeah. as well. I mean, we've spoke about them. Is it Lyle Cameron, yeah. who's mm-hmm. decent yeah. in the middle of the pitch? Yeah. But Luke McCown. Yeah. Um, Really good left foot. He's always impressed me. Every time I've seen Dundee, whether that's been live or on the highlights, he's always stood out for sure. Uh, Mark, what's the any latest? I know Celtic obviously are going to need a keeper for next season. Yeah. And my goodness, since he announced he's going, everyone's uh, he hasn't put a foot or a hand wrong. Joe Hart. I see the Transponspor goalkeeper Gurkin Kakar has yeah. been mentioned today. Um, yep. Turkish international mm. could it be he's on Celtic's radar, maybe. Well, certainly, the, the, you know, there was a, a a big piece in the Turkish uh, media. That's where mm-hmm. this um, story emanated from. Um, Paul, you know, going down to detail as in, you know, official contact by email uh, from the Celtic boardroom to the Trasbon Spor uh, boardroom, valued at around £6 million, okay. 28, yep. 29 years old, good CV. Uh, and like I said, Paul, if you, you, you're not going to be successful if you don't have a top goalkeeper. So they need to find a top goalkeeper from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Big Joe did well yesterday, didn't he? Be a hard act to, yeah. to replace. Yeah. I, I, I said it, Paul. Look, yep, he's made a, a couple of mistakes, but what goalkeepers don't make me mistakes. And um, experienced, and as I said, he, he'll, um, he'll miss him running about the dressing room because I've been in the dressing room with Big Joe, and he's a he's a real um, real leader. So, yep, I think Celtic will need to go and spend big to get a replacement in for him Thomas is listening in San Francisco big Hibs fan what's happening Mark 2-1 defeat at home to St Johnson um, questions about why no VAR for the penalty Marconde is wiped out by Mitoff that was a pen Paul yeah. I mean, uh, you know again in, in the current rules uh, if you think of what um, the Hibs goalkeeper was punished for in the game against Celtic yeah. you know mm-hmm. so when you see Mitoff I like Mitoff he's been a brilliant signing St Johnson but in the current guidelines the current rules that's a penalty all day long and I don't even think it was referred to VAR was it, it for the no. referee that's my question why looking. no VAR why well, was it not I mean, again Paul yeah. that's just where you're just left dumbfounded mm-hmm. by some of our decisions not only up here down the road as well I mean you're talking they are full time yeah. and some of the clangers that, that they've got I mean there's James Madison punching <laughs> the 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 the, yeah. uh, the Nottingham mm-hmm. Forest one is it Yates yeah. And that but, didn't even deem it enough yeah. for the referee to go and have a look at it. Absolutely frightening. Do you, do you think Nick Montgomery's job's up for? Yeah. Yeah, I think well, he could Jink, be struggling. Will be, he'll be concerned because I, I tell yeah. you, if they don't make the top six, especially with the budget they've got as well, um, yeah, I think he, I think he maybe could be in trouble. Yeah could be uh, Chris Cadden getting his first goal in some time because we know he's been out most of the season but well done St Johnson City Bay scoring of course a solo run what a goal for him and uh, Tony Gallagher his first ever goal what about Kilmarnock what are you thinking what a performance by well the whole team under the the manager brilliant and you know just getting that 1-0 win Paul clean sheet you know just kind of grinding it out not always pretty but just getting results and listen I've said it almost every week in this programme you know just credit to to Derek McInnes, we did we did say he recruited really well in the summer. He really did. He identified areas that he had to go and strengthen. Brought in a real bit of pace to the team, even even in the back line um, as well. Then you see you know a couple of young players coming coming through and and really doing the the business for them. So yeah, absolutely brilliant for coming up. European football beckoning for next season for Kelly Barry. I, I think they'll cement fourth place. No doubt about it. And you, I mean, <clears throat> you look at the the players that he's got there. I mean, everybody talks about the two boys up top, Watkins and Vassell, and you've got Armstrong and um, Matty Kennedy, who who have been excellent in the wide areas. And Derek's done a brilliant job, Paul. He's got a he's got a very good team there. Uh, they play a certain way, 
Um, but they know their job's inside out and yep, they're going to cement that fourth spot. They sure are. And for St Mirren as well, it's been disappointing at times, but overall, Mark, we did say earlier, it's been a, a great season for them on a very limited budget. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, it's about uh, using your budget wisely, eh, Paul, and using the loan market, um, bringing through two or three your own, you know, introducing them at the first team squad and, and, and getting a tune um, out of them, then your, your experienced players to carry you. Uh, most times, like you know, like Matt Lahara in, in the middle of the park, you know, Greg uh, Kelty, um, etc., etc. So, uh, yeah, um, St. Mirren have been really good, and uh, that's the thing, Paul. We're talking about Derek McInnes, we're talking about Stephen Robinson. Yeah. Um, we've got really good managers, you know, out with the top two, Tony Docky, we spoke about, mm-hmm. we've got Stuart Kettlewell, mm-hmm. we've got some really good managers in our. In our uh, Top flight, but we're often obsessed with you know get names from abroad to be in my in, in England as well. You know, yeah. the, and there's great managers abroad, but surely great managers here at home as well in the Absolutely. men's and the women's game. Absolutely, yeah, yeah all across the board. Mark, I'd be remiss, remiss not to say I see on the Sun Scottish Sun online they're saying an exclusive bottle job. Celtic reveal Matt O'Reilly had glass bottle thrown at him during the game yesterday. I mean, if that's the case, uh, it's shocking. And it it's shocking, a small minority, but one yeah. is one too many. Yeah, it is, and it'll need to be it'll need to be uh, dealt with because it's not the first time uh, this has happened when Celtic have gone to Ibrox. So it's something that the, the the police and the SPFL and the SFA and whoever else wants to get involved. Yeah, because you know. Objects are thrown, Paul. You, you could get hit. There could be a serious injury, yeah. you know, and it's absolutely not acceptable. And you made the point earlier. It was great to see the two managers. You know, yeah. a hug at the end. It's been a great game, and that's what it should be about. Yeah. But people need to remember whatever happened between Cantwell and McGregor, or whatever Cantwell did push them. They need to remember that this is a volatile situation. The players themselves are respectful of each other. It was a great yeah. contest. Yeah. Let's not waste it. Yeah. No, because I, I don't think now supporters can use it because oh, you know that the. The players are setting a bad example. They they feel is on. You know that that's not the case. As I say, it's been exemplary for the past couple of seasons. Uh, both sets of players and um, anything that's happened yesterday that's unsavoury, any objects need to be dealt with. Paul, the CCTV now in all yeah. stadiums. It shouldn't be difficult to go and find the perpetrators and bring them to justice. It's been some weekend, hasn't it, Barry? For Wednesday, then let's hope the weather is okay for the match to go ahead. Dundee Rangers. Yeah, Rangers will be desperate, and so will Dundee, let's be honest. Um, so hopefully the, the, the game goes ahead, um, and look, Rangers will need to be on it, because I know Mother, uh, sorry, Dundee get beat the weekend with Motherwell, but it's always a tough place to, to go and get a result. So hopefully it's on, and Rangers can go and get the, the vital three points. And then that would take them to the weekend, where Celtic would look to go back on top against St Mirren. And then Sunday, Ross County against Rangers. Mark is one of the finest writers in the country. <laughs> you you, know, you yes, couldn't make you. up. It's great, isn't it's it? Brilliant. Great one. No, yeah. I said, uh, genuinely, yeah. you know, on Monday night, we've had a belter yesterday, mm. a great weekend, and it all kicks off again on, on, on Wednesday night. You know, for to be sitting in this situation, Paul, and both clubs having it, in their own hands is absolutely brilliant for Scottish football Barry we won't add on 8 minutes injury time that's it the 90 minutes are up good good because I'm going back to my bed (laughs) the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents call 0141 374 0409 let's go When it comes to selling your home, at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market, at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.